Christian Communications Network from Belfast, Northern Ireland, welcomes you to today's programme. Here is Deciding Your Destiny with Dr. Cecil Stewart, OBE. Welcome to Deciding Your Destiny. Today I'm excited to introduce a message by Dr. Cecil Stewart called Seeds That Shape Our Future. This was filmed in Bally Bay, County Monaghan. So stay tuned and enjoy the message. And so we're expecting results, we're expecting a harvest, because his word is living seed, and his word always brings a harvest, a good harvest. And so we're going to be referring back to the reading we did earlier from Mark 4, but first I want to quote a verse that's very familiar. It is John chapter 4, and verse 35. It's also about harvest, it's about farming, it's about seed time, and uh, we'll just read it here. Do not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the, at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. God has blessed his word. So we do believe these words of Jesus that we've read just now, and also the John chapter or Mark chapter 4 reading. And so we expect there to be harvest. No farmer goes out to the field and sows seed and doesn't expect a harvest. He believes that that seed that's sowed in the soil will bring forth a crop, will bring increase. And so we believe that as we share the seed of God's word tonight, it will shape our future. It will give us hope. It will give us encouragement. It will give us vision. It will empower us to be a blessing to our neighbors, to our communities. It will empower us to have hope for those who may be suffering with anxieties or fears or illness in your body. God's word always lifts and gives hope and gives faith and causes us to rise above every storm and every challenge that we face. And so when Jesus spoke these words, he was encouraging the people, don't put off the harvest. Don't say there's yet four months. Don't say it's going to be all right in a future time. He's saying already you can have your harvest. It is the season of harvest. And as I was praying about this this morning, I felt in my heart the Lord had quickened to my heart that we should be expecting a harvest right now. Because we've been sowing, many of you have been praying just as a farmer has worked for many months and prepared the ground and sowed the seed and he's getting ready to bring the harvest in, perhaps already has a lot of it in. So we believe that as we've been praying and sowing the word together and preparing our hearts for this time, that we will see a harvest of changed lives and people lifted and empowered and blessed and families touched and the love of God manifested. So Jesus was saying, don't put off the harvest that I have in mind. Don't put off the answers to prayer to some future time. He was saying, you can expect a harvest now because the fields are white already to harvest. Last week we had an event in Jordanstown which we called All Nations Event. People from different nations were there, India, Africa, and different countries. And uh, we saw a young couple come in at the back and remembered that they had been in our meeting in Athlone many years ago. And uh, a husband and wife, he was a school teacher in that area of Athlone, and his wife and their little child. And uh, as we shared the word of the Lord and the love of God that night, they were some of the first people to respond and receive salvation. Then they told us later that when they came into the meeting, their life was under great strain, anxiety, depression. Their marriage was really on the edge of collapsing. There had been much strife in their home. And before the meeting ever happened, they said that they felt unless something happened that night, their marriage was over. Earlier in the day, they'd heard an interview on the radio there in Athlone that we were coming to have a meeting that night 
And when he came home from teaching school, his wife said to him, if there's any hope for our marriage, we'll better go to that meeting tonight because these people are going to be talking about Jesus and how he changed his lives. And so they both decided, even in their broken state and full of anxiety, full of fear, hopelessness, they both decided to come. But that night, the Holy Spirit touched their lives through the Word of God, and they responded and came into a close relationship with Jesus. They were born again, and their lives were transformed, and then they were back again. Just last week, they came all the way from that area to be in the meeting, the All Nations Night, still transformed after all those years. So the seed that you sow today can shape people's future. When we show the love of God to others, when we speak the word of God to others, when we share our testimony with others, or even live a life that is glorifying to God, then the seeds from that life impact others and shapes their future. And God has no bad plans for your future. That's why Jesus came. What did he say in John 10:10? 10, 10? He said, the devil, the thief, comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. He doesn't want us to wait till we get to heaven to enjoy life, but we have eternal life right now. We have his peace. In the midst of a troubled world, yes, we can still have his peace. We've all had troubles. We've all had big challenges. Some of us have challenges for health reasons and we're told there was no hope. Both Evelyn and I face that kind of a report from the doctors, but we prove that the great physician is still alive today and he still heals broken hearts, broken homes, broken bodies. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so we come with confidence, knowing we're not just talking about something in theory. We have proved the experience of God's hand upon our lives and the reality of him lifting us. When I was in my early 20s, I was told I had tuberculosis. I suffered great depression at that time. And uh, there was no cure for quite a long time. They told me I'd have to go to the sanatorium for at least six months. And uh, we were about to be married. And I didn't want to have that happening before my wedding. Evelyn also had taken ill at that time. And so our future looked hopeless. But the seeds of the word had been sown in our hearts already. I'd seen my own mother healed from Judelian ulcers, and she was very ill when we were growing up. And we had seen her raised up through simple prayer in a small meeting in this area. Some people believed that God was the same, that he healed the sick, and he does. And she was miraculously healed from ulcers and transformed and never had the slightest problem and lived to be almost 90. So we know that the seed of the word shapes our future. It brings faith, it brings hope. Those who have no assurance of salvation can come. And as the scripture says in Romans 10 and 9, if we believe in our hearts and confess with our mouth that Jesus died and rose again, we are saved. Saved from a lost eternity, yes. Saved from sin. Doesn't mean we won't have problems and struggles, but in the midst of our problems, in the midst of our struggles, we're assured of the presence of the Lord and the guidance of his Holy Spirit to enable us to walk through any storm, any challenge, any trial and keep going because he is our strength. Our sufficiency is of God and not of ourselves. So Jesus, when he spoke here in John 4.35 about the harvest, he was encouraging the people to lift their eyes up beyond themselves and to look on the harvest field around them, just as a farmer looks at the crops and checks things out and sees when is the right time to harvest this seed? When is the right time? We used to, in my early days, we used to plant corn and sometimes barley and potatoes. And when we come home from school in the harvest time, we would be sent straight out to help before we even done our homework. We had to do some help on the farm and bring the potatoes in or bring the corn in or whatever it was. And so Jesus was saying, look, I want you to be encouraged to lift your eyes up and get a vision because the fields are already white to harvest. 
Lots of people are ready to come to Christ. They may not tell you so. Lots of people are hurting. They may smile and they may say everything's fine, but a lot of people have burdens. A lot of people have disappointments and hurts and offenses. But the good news of the gospel is that Jesus came to re reconcile, to reconcile us back to God, to restore us. And he came also to give us hope and faith that we can actually walk through our storms and through our struggles, no matter how difficult the time may be. So we need to be expecting a harvest. He said, the harvest's already ready. So just as a farmer plants seed with a desired result, he's believing when he plants the seed, when he prepares the fields, there will come a day when there will be a harvest and he sees the vision of the harvest being brought in. So when we come like we come here, we expect a harvest. We've had the privilege over the years of ministering in very small meetings. We've traveled to Bantry, we've traveled to Cork, we've traveled all over the South. We've gone across the UK, we've ministered in Sweden, in Germany, in Belgium, and more recently all over Africa. We've ministered and stood on platforms with field fields of people. People estimated one of the Crusades in Nairobi at over 200,000. And in Mombasa, we had leaders' meetings of 6,000 leaders, and then they said there was 250,000 in the field, and a mighty harvest came. We saw the seed of the Word bringing forth fruit. It wasn't us. It was only the Word of the Lord that brings a harvest. The seed of the Word brings a harvest. So no matter whether it's small numbers of 20 people, 10 people, it makes no difference. God's Word works in every season. God's Word works in every community. No matter what country, God loves people. No matter what denomination, no matter what your background, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts and He brings transformation. And the songs we heard sang tonight about the power of redemption, about the gospel, and Calvary and the reality of what he did for us are so special. What the cross means is way beyond what we could ever express. Not just forgiveness of our past sins, not just assurance of heaven, but he has provided through the cross his divine grace to empower us to live an overcoming life right in the midst of the most difficult times. Jesus is with us. And he loves the family and he loves the home and he loves people. And he has good plans. The devil came to steal, to kill and to destroy. But Jesus came to give us life abundant. So we need to be expecting harvest today, answers to prayer today. Scripture says in 2 Corinthians 6, 2, now is the accepted time and now is the day of salvation. So we can expect a harvest from the seeds we've sown You've been praying for this three-day event. You've been working, you've been giving out flowers, you've been believing, and God sees the prayers even in your own heart that you're believing God for. You're maybe requests that you long to see family, problems sorted and lives changed and sicknesses healed. And I believe if we let our faith loose to the Lord, he will honor that faith and we will see good transformation happen in our lives. Ecclesiastes 11.4 says that he that observes the wind shall not slow, sow and he that regards the clouds shall not reap. So we don't go by feelings. A farmer doesn't prepare the ground just when it feels good. He prepares it because he knows the time is coming when seed will be planted and when there will be potential for harvest. And when the harvest comes, there may be weather conditions that are challenging but he keeps going and he keeps persisting until he gets the harvest in. We as believers also don't walk by feelings or what we see, but we trust the Lord and we have a vision to see a harvest brought about. Farmers are people of vision because otherwise they never sow seed. They are, they are people of faith. They expect results from the harvest to sow. And so we can learn a lot from the parable that Jesus gave in Mark chapter 4 of sowing the seed, bringing in the harvest, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. And so this portion that was read earlier from Mark chapter 4 is 
part of the basis for my message, or the main part of the basis for my message, which I felt the Holy Spirit led me to share tonight. Because in that portion, Jesus gives a parable, a sower went forth to sow. As he sowed, some fell by the wayside, some fell among thorns, some were choked, some were overcome with different situations in life, like stony ground, Different kinds of soil were mentioned. We're going to look at those very briefly tonight because it's relevant to us in our daily walk. So when Jesus spoke about farming and spoke about sowing and reaping, he wasn't just speaking about the natural harvest of farming and reaping, but he was speaking about life, all areas of our lives, our families, our burdens, our trials, our situations. And he was showing, showing to us that the seed of the word can bring about a change, even in a desolate situation. And so he said, listen, he said there, a, a sower went forth to sow, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. So we are sowers. <laughs> That's my first point. Number one, the sower. This sower who went forth, he had to have a heart to reach out to others. We have to have a heart to reach out to others, and we can do that by faith, depending not on ourselves, but depending on the Holy Spirit, depending on the Word of God, which is alive and active. And so we sow every day we live. We go out, we scatter seeds. And the Scripture says in Psalm 126, verse 6, that he that goes forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. So God will honor the seeds you've sown in your prayer life, in every area of your life. He wants to give you a harvest of good results, to answer to prayer, things you've been praying for for years, maybe things that you've not even shared with anybody else. You carry burdens that you never even share, but God delights to answer your prayers and to give you a good future and a hope. And he has the right plan for you if you'll follow his plan. So his word reveals his will and shows us what it is that he has in store. Number two, the seed. The sower did not go out empty-handed, but he went out sowing the seed. And Jesus said later that that's, that seed represents the word of God. And so as he scattered the seed, it wasn't just his own ideas. It was seed that brings forth a good harvest. It was good seed. And as he scattered the good seed, the Bible says there was fruit that took root. There were some that were sown on stony ground and some fell by the wayside. And that casual attitude is seen there when people come casually and don't really value how precious the seed is. Those who are those by the wayside who listen casually and don't take it seriously. Don't realize how much power there is in the Word to change your life. Don't realize the privilege of the opportunity of seed time and harvest. We know the scripture in Genesis 8, 22, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest will not cease. So when we live our lives and we honor the Lord and we walk in submission to his will, we are sowing good seed. We can witness to others, we can help others, we can be a blessing to our community. But he also tells us to expect a harvest back in our own lives and in the lives of those we minister to. Just as this man scattered the seed, it takes root and his word is alive and it is active. The other day, Evelyn and I was looking at the garden at home and she reminded me about these three different roses <laughs> that's in the garden. And she said, she named the people that gave us the gifts of these way back years ago. This one rose, and then another one, and another part, and a third one. She said, so-and-so brought us that and mentioned the names of the people. And I thought, my, my, that's a after some years, it still repeats every year. It still grows every year. The seed was sown, and it keeps bringing back the beauty and co color. And that's what the Lord does. He brings beauty and color to your life. Some people have this idea that being a Christian is boring and no answers are not relevant. No. 
The life that Jesus gives is relevant. He's interested in every part of our lives. He brings color. He causes life to take on a meaning. And so we begin to see that there is a higher life, there is a better life available. Jesus said in John 6, 63, it is the spirit that quickens. The flesh doesn't profit anything. And Jesus said, the words I speak to you, they're spirit and they are life. That means they have creative power. So God's word is not only a lamp to our feet and light to our path, but it has creative power to bring hope, to bring faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. And the scripture says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So that's why we have these meetings. That's why Reverend Buchanan and the leadership here wanted to have this meeting and we wanted to have it and we worked together to bring hope and bring faith and encouragement to the people of the church and to the people of the community. And we believe that God's word is active and powerful and it will bring forth fruit and will shape our future. Seeds that shape your future, that renews your mind, that gives you direction in life and causes you to make right choices in relationship, younger people. God has plans for your life. Who's to be your friends? Who's to be your husband, your wife? Honor him, he knows better than any of us. And we acknowledge him in all our ways and he directs our path. So he has a far better future for us than we could ever plan for ourselves. So we are not only called to sow the seed, but we're called to accept, expect a harvest that will shape the future of our own lives and of others. Number three, the soil. It's important to prepare the soil. Farming community, you will know how crucial it is to prepare the soil before you put the seed in. The same is true in the spiritual realm. When we have an opportunity like being here tonight, it's good to prepare our hearts in prayer, take a little extra time and put the Lord first and listen to his voice and heed his promptings and be ready to receive the word in your heart and let it change your mind, renew your mind. And that's what coming to Christ is all about. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away and all things are become new. That means we change our thinking. We change our walk. We stop walking the old life of selfishness and sin and pride. And we surrender to Jesus and we start to enjoy his presence and his abundant life. And we become instruments in his hand. So there's various kinds of soil. I mentioned some of them already. The wayside, that means casual hearers who don't really value the word. Stony ground, some of the seed sprang up suddenly on the stony ground, but it didn't last because it had no root. And then when pressures came and persecution and tribulation, there was offense and they walked away. So we need to be persistent even through trouble, and trouble will come. Somebody said, trouble is inevitable, but misery is optional. <laughs> you don't have to be miserable because there's trouble. Jesus said, be of good cheer. In the world you will have tribulation, but I have overcome the world. Yes, we still have trouble as believers. But if we walk in faith and look to Jesus, he will bring us through it. We've both experienced over and over, not only in our travels, in many parts of the world, but also just daily life brings us trouble, brings us trouble. You have plenty of opportunity to take on board anxiety and fear and worry, but you have a choice to say, no, I'm not going to take that anymore. What did the Apostle Paul say in Philippians 4? He said, do not be anxious for anything, but pray about everything. And he also said, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. It's not easy, but we don't walk by feelings, we walk by faith. And so there will be times when there's tribulation It mentioned here in this reading from Mark 4, when tribulation comes or trials, some are offended and they turn away. Persecution arises for the word's sake because of what the word says, the lifestyle you should live and the way you should respond. It's different than the world's way, totally different. So people will say, I don't want to do that because our mind has not been renewed. But if we believe God and act according to his word, then we will see good change happen. Talks also about good ground. And it tells us there, 
that that ground, some brings forth 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold. So the good ground is the ground that's been prepared. Stony ground, it can be changed, it can be weeded out, it can be prepared. Our hearts can be softened in the love of God as we spend time in prayer and in the Word daily. Put Him first daily. Thorns, well, it says thorns choke the Word. Thorns can be strife, argument, contention, division, all these things. Chokes the Word and it becomes unfruitful. But we don't have to let the Word be choked. We can take the Word and let it take root in our hearts. In Romans 5, 17 through 18, it talks about the fact that through the disobedience of Adam, many were made sinners. But through the obedience of Jesus, many have been made righteous. And then it says something powerful. It says, those who receive the abundance of his grace and the gift of his righteousness shall reign in life by Christ Jesus. That is a powerful scripture, Romans 5, 17. Those who receive the abundance of grace. We cannot get to heaven through our own efforts. If we could have done it through good works and doing the right thing, the cross would have been totally unnecessary. But what does Ephesians 5, 2, 5 or 2, 8? It says, by grace you are saved through faith, not of yourself, not of works, lest anyone should boast. It is the gift of God. So his grace means unmerited favor. He provided salvation. He took our place because our efforts would not be enough. No matter how many good works we've done, would never accomplish eternal life. That's why Jesus said, you must be born again. You must have a rebirth, have a change of heart, change of mind, change of walk. Going to church will not save you. Being religious will not save you. Coming into relationship, yes, that is the key. Knowing him as your Lord and as your Savior and thanking him that he paid the price, not only for your past sins, but he's there ongoing, if you do slip, to forgive you again and to reconcile you. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses from all sin. So we need to prepare the good ground and we need to prepare for a harvest and it takes patience as a farmer when he works on the farm through all kinds of weather, even bringing in the harvest, has to be very patient, very persistent, and stay with it through trials. We as believers and Christians who want to walk in the ways of the Lord, we need to be persistent and patient and determined and very strong in the Lord and the power of his might. So we need to be encouraged. I remember my brother Sam, who's recently gone to heaven, he worked around this area. He worked in Dundalk and he traveled, but he had not come to the Lord, not had a relationship. And there was a mission going on in the community here. Can't remember exactly where it was, but there were seven boys, some of you will know in our family, and two girls. And uh, My mother was always endeavoring to share the word with us. My mother was brought up in the Carvalli area, Carvalli Presbyterian Church, and she came to Christ as a young girl, and she knew the reality of salvation. And one of the verses she quoted so often was Romans 8, verse 6. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. In other words, to live our own lives according to our own dictates and feelings, it brings death. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. One person, my mother, who was saved at that early age, shaped our generation, shaped our whole family because she eventually was able to lead every one of the seven boys and two girls to salvation. Yes, some of them came in faith mission meetings, some of them came in church outreaches. But my brother Sam, he hadn't come at this stage and he was not interested. He said, I, I don't want to give up smoking. <laughs> He thought if you had to get saved, you, you must give up smoking. Well, smoking may not stop you from getting to heaven, get you there quicker. <laughs> It'll get your lungs in trouble. But anyway, he was making excuses. I have to go to get cigarettes. He was only home from work. And my mother being persistent and 
having a heart to reach her family. She said, I'll tell you what, Sam, if you'll take me to the meeting, he was going to drive her. He said, we'll go by the shop and get you cigarettes, and then we'll go on to the meeting. So he fell for that. <laughs> what happened was, they went to the meeting, he never got to smoke the cigarettes. <laughs> because that night he came to a real salvation experience, was radically changed, was filled with the Holy Spirit later, and his life was amazing. And he, he, he just went to heaven recently. Family serving God, grandchildren serving God. And that's happened to all of us by the grace of God, nothing to do with our worthiness. We were worthy of nothing. We could accomplish nothing through our own efforts. All our righteousness are as filthy rags. It's the grace of God. The grace of God is not just, as I said a moment ago, bringing forgiveness of sins, getting us into heaven. The grace of God is for every day empowering us to live an overcoming life. His power upon us every single day. And so we need to stop looking back at past mistakes and condemning ourselves. You know, when you drive your car, do you look at the windscreen most of the time as you're driving, or do you look in the rear mirror most of the time? If you look in the rear mirror most of the time, you probably end up in the ditch, <laughs> like happened to me one time. But we don't look back. The devil will want you to look back at your faults, your failures. Every one of us have slipped. Every one of us have made mistakes. Every one of us could give in to guilt. But the good news is that Jesus took our guilt and Romans 8, 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. He took our guilt. He took our condemnation. He took the punishment for our sins. We couldn't have paid for it. Only the blood of Jesus, the Savior, could do that. And that's why he's called the Savior. We used to sing a chorus in the Faith Mission. Does the Faith Mission still work around here? That's wonderful. We used to sing a chorus, he did not come to judge the world, he did not come to blame. He did not only come to seek, it was to save he came. And when we call him Savior, we call him by his name. Does anybody remember that chorus? Here we are. You see, that is what it's about. He's the Savior. He'd only save, he doesn't only save you from sin and from a lost eternity. He saves us from wrong choices. He saves us from wrong connections. He saves us from bad habits. He saves us from a life of absolute destruction because that's what Satan comes to do. He came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus came not only to save us, but to give us a good life and give us a life that is profitable. And so we need to plan in line with God's plan. We have a saying sometimes in the meetings, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. But I'm so glad Jesus planned our future, a good future. The seeds of his word, the seeds of the cross, his precious blood, his salvation, his wonderful purpose revealed, shapes our future. And we don't have to live a life depending on ourselves anymore. But Jesus paid it all, all to whom we owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. So whatever age you are tonight, we're going to be given opportunities for all who are not sure about your salvation, you're not sure about your relationship. Each night we're going to be given an opportunity for you to join us upstairs, there's a prayer room upstairs, we'll go up there later. And all who need to talk about your assurance of salvation or you have a problem with health or your relationship situations, God has put his love in our hearts and we'll be happy and there's members of the team here of course as well who will help you and give you literature to cause you to walk in a, a way that's fruitful, having a good future, because the seed of God's word is being honored and respected. And he, Jesus took the thorns on his head at the cross, so we don't need to have a troubled mind anymore. He came to give you peace of mind. He took the thorns that we would not have contentions and ongoing strife. Yes, there's always periods of tensions and strife, but it doesn't have to persist. We can deal with it immediately and have our minds renewed and have our hearts quickened and strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit.
Let me close this short little story which illustrates redemption. I love this little story because it's about a young boy who had made with his own hands a little boat at a little lake by their house. He used to play with the boat on the lake. He had his name on the side of it. He put it on there. And then one day when he finished playing with the, the boat, he went back home as usual. But the next day when he came, the boat was gone. He was very upset, very sad. So he went back and said to his mother, my, back, my boat is missing. And so they looked for the boat everywhere, searched for it, but couldn't find the boat. Some weeks and months later in the town, they were walking down the street and they saw this shop that sells various things, including little boats. And there he saw his little boat for sale in the window. He knew the boat because it was a special mark with his name on it. But the price they were asking, the young boy couldn't afford it. So he came home and shared it with his parents and his friends, and eventually they raised the money, which was quite a lot of money in that time. And they got the money and bought the boat back. As they brought the boat back and put it on the lake, he was overjoyed with delight. And then he was heard to say by his parents, he's talking to the boat on his own out in the little pond, little boat, you're twice mine. And so as the boat was brought back, he was delighted. And he said, it's twice mine. Well, that's what Jesus did. We were lost. The devil stole us through deception. We followed the path of sin. We all come short of the glory of God. None righteous, no, not one. But Jesus found a way. He paid the price with his own blood to redeem us back. We're his twice over. We belong to God. And we are called to serve him. And there's no higher life I've lived quite a long time now, traveled a lot in the world, and I can tell you I've seen millions of people. Our programs have reached millions. We've had responses from many nations, and even now, each day we broadcast every single day on television in Italy, reaching many Italian people who are coming to Christ. And I can tell you there's nothing, nothing, nothing can compare with the seed of the word to shape your future, to deal with your past, to give you power for your present. Everything you need has been provided through the cross. So much more than we claim. There's a non-claimed inheritance for you. Salvation from sin, peace from a troubled heart, healing for a sick body, restoration of broken relationships. Through the cross, so much more has been provided that all of us can let the seed of the word in and shape our future and be all he called us to be. We hope you were blessed by Dr. Cecil Stewart's message on seeds that shape our future. If you were encouraged by today's programme, please make sure to contact us with the details to follow. We would love to hear from you. CCN Northern Ireland is on Facebook so make sure to add us as your friend and click like for upcoming events and updates. Christian Communications Network, check us out on Facebook. What do you mean it's impossible? The inspirational Cecil Stewart story. What happens when you encounter life's choppy waters? Find out more and purchase your copy today. Christian Communications Network is on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe to CCN Northern Ireland where there are a variety of messages with Dr. Cecil Stewart from various nations around the world, so make sure to check us out. Dr. Cecil Stewart has multiple resources, including these amazing hope builders, such as It's Not Over, Give It Over and Get On, Followers Who Finish, Sight Sounds and Seasons, and many others, so make sure you get your free copy today. information on today's programme, contact us today. CCN 547 Antrim Road, Belfast, County Antrim, Northern Ireland, BT 15 3BU. Telephone 02890 779 552. 
email ccn at ccnorg.com, check us out on Facebook and YouTube, and visit our website ccnorg.com. Music